Okay, so today we are going to start a tutorial series on how to model a supercar. So the software that I will be using to teach you the basics of car modeling is Autodesk Maya. But what we're going to do is start off um, with Adobe Photoshop first. Now, as part of the tutorial, I'm going to be modeling a Lamborghini Huracan. As you can see, I've got the blueprints already um, set up inside here. Now, the reason that I'll be modeling a uh, Lamborghini is because supercars are, in my opinion anyway, actually far easier to model than everyday vehicles such as Ford Foxes and all that good stuff. So, before we actually start the modeling itself, we need two things. Firstly, we need a whole host of um, reference images. So we can see, obviously, Google is going to be giving us everything that we need. And we want to get as many reference images as we can to showcase all of the different um, kind of sections that we're going to be looking at and all of the details within those. So the front here, we can see that we've got some um, text around the lights that we may not see on our blueprints. So it's always good to have a bunch of reference images inside there. But before we start with the reference images, we need some nice, highly detailed blueprints. So you can see here that I have um, four set of blueprints here. I've got front, side, top, and the rear. Now, it's always important to have all four. It can be a bit tricky if you're missing the top or side or something like that whilst you're uh, modeling through. Now, what we actually need to do is attach these to an image plane. And in order to do that, we need to split all of the images up. Now, when you're looking for your blueprints, you want to make sure that it's super high resolution. You can see here that my image at 100%, well, 50% here is incredibly detailed. That's going to allow us to get inside here and see all of the different details um, around the door, um, the arches, all the details up here, for example. And it even gives a good idea of what the mesh looks like. As we can see, it's kind of a honeycomb dodgy shape inside here. But we can see how many rows that we actually need in order to get it as realistic as possible. So... To get started with these blueprints, we're going to need all of these sections in a separate file. Um, so what I've done here is I've aligned them all nicely, perfectly across the top and the sides. And I've used some guides inside Photoshop here to outline the sections that I'm actually going to be cropping down here. So you can see that I've got guides going from the top to the bottom and then from the other side of the uh, picture here. So what we're going to do is we are actually going to take these sections off completely and save them as four individual files. Those files we can then take into Maya and um, use as our orthographic images. So, first things first, what we're going to do is going to use the marquee tool here and we are going to use the guides to draw around a section. So, we'll take the largest one here first and we'll grab that image. Now, what we're going to do is going to use some of the Photoshop tools here to tell us how large essentially we want this image to be. So, I'm going to control C this and copy this here and then we're going to open up a new document. And what we're going to do with this new document is we are going to use the clipboard um, section here. The only thing that we're actually going to change as far as this size is concerned is we're going to increase the width here to 3000, just to round it up. And then we're also going to change the height here to 3000 as well. Now the reason that we're going to do this is when we use Autodesk Maya, uh, the different orthographic views can rescale your elements based on its larger size, largest edge. So if you were to take an image in which is a different size to another, um, but still holds the same height, for example, then that means that that um, image will be scaled up by Maya and will not match the other image that you have on the side view, for example. What we're going to do there is we're going to paste this straight in so we can see that we've got a little bit of side, um, um, space either side, but that's no uh, big deal there. Um, what we can do is we can paint the background here so it looks a bit nicer. So, with the top view, the only one we actually have to edit is the top view. And what we need to do with this is we need to rotate this to go from top to bottom. Uh, because of the orthographic view, we need that to go in the same direction as our side image as well. Next thing we're going to do is go back into our original document here. And this time we are going to marquee this side. Again, we're going to copy that across into a new document. That one will be fine on its own. We don't need to make any changes to that. That will go in the correct orientation in response to the vertical image there. We will also take the front and the back as well. Now again, one of the benefits of doing it this way means that all of our images on our new document is going to be exactly in the center. So that means that we won't have to make any adjustments to the position of these elements. We know that they're all going to sit nicely. We know that they're going to sit exactly where we want them to. And um, we take them into our Autodesk Maya file. Now, 
finally what we do here is we're just going to save all these documents. We're going to hit save as here and then we can just call this one top and JPEG will be fine. We want a fairly full, um, small file size. One of the problems with um, this is it will affect the um, the final save file sizes that we do have inside of Maya. Uh, take that down there. We'll go side. Now it's really important to have as high resolution image as possible. Oops. Um, if you're going to go in with small uh, resolution images, you'll find it incredibly difficult to get all of those small details that um, you're going to require as we go here. Front. And then finally, we're going to save this as our rear here. Cool. So now we have all of our orthographic images set up. They're all looking quite good. 2000 by 3000 pixel resolution means that it will be incredibly um, detailed and looking good when we get it into Maya and start modeling. So in the next episode what we're going to do is we will take these orthographic images here, we'll drop them into our Maya document and then get started.